it. So, I'm gonna do exciting thing is happening to me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. My hands are shaking. I'm so excited. You know why I'm excited? Do you know why I'm excited? Well, I'm excited because I'm going to my grandmother and grandfather's house today. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But here's the bad thing. I have to finish my homework, which I'm not a big fan of doing. <sighs> I love playing in my grandma's house. It's so big. I have so much place, like places to go. And I made some friends there. And we play hide and seek. We run. We jump. It's so much fun. They hardly ever visit us. And like, I'm really, really excited because we we don't get many chances to go there. No, I don't want to do my homework. But I suppose you have to do your homework because it's important for the future. Hold oh, mind. Okay, question number one. How wide can a hippo stretch its jaws? So, hippos, I, hippopotamuses, their jaws are like really, really big. So, our ones are pretty small. And I can only open it about, about this much. Like this much, the space between my two fingers. But hippos, they can open it like, if this is like the angle, they can open it a lot. So... Their jaws are really big, so we have four options. 150 degrees. Oh wait, so option A, 150 degrees. Option B, 120 degrees. Option C, 90 degrees. And option D, 65 degrees. So normally when you're measuring like an angle width, you normally measure it in degrees. Like, so it's like 150 degrees is like this, it's, it's really big. Like, it's, like his mouth can stretch like this. If it's 120 degrees, his mouth can stretch like this. If it's 90 degrees, this. 65 degrees, this. So his jaws are really big. So I don't think it's 65 or 90 because I've seen them and they have big teeth and they open it really, really, really wide. So I'm going to go with the maximum option that I can go, which is 150 degrees. So I'm going to say that the answer is option A, 150 degrees. Let's see if I'm correct. The answer is 120 degrees. So my answer was correct. Hippos are highly territorial, opening their mouths wide in a show of dominance. So they're really territorial. So they love their space. So like you love your home, right? I love my house and my home. I love staying with my family. And I wouldn't want anybody coming inside my space without an invitation. So hippos are like that. And they don't want anybody, an intruder or an enemy coming into their house. And as I told you, they have really big teeth. So they open their mouth wide to show their big teeth and scare the enemy so that they go away. They weigh up to 4,400 pounds, which is even more than a lion. So they're really, 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 really heavy. More heavy than you can imagine. These barrel-shaped creatures are more dangerous than they appear, capable of snapping a crocodile in half. So as, it, like, as you know, crocodiles, they have these scaly backs and they're really hard to like damage. So the fact that a hippopotamus can snap a crocodile in half means that they're really strong. But normally they're not very aggressive, but if they're threatened, they tend to fight back. So, okay, that answer was correct. I'm hoping to get the next question correct.
also. So let's go and do the second question. Question number two. Elephants are the largest land animals and are incredibly intelligent creatures. They are really smart. Which of the following traits do humans and elephants share? So they're really intelligent, like us, humans are the most intelligent animals. And elephants are also pretty in intelligent, really smart. Um, so what traits do humans and elephants both do? So what things do humans and elephants both do? We have four options. Option A, burying their dead. Option B, long-term memory. Option C, forming deep family bonds. And option, option D, all of the above. <coughs> so, option A, it says burying their dead. But how can elephants bury their dead? Like, we can dig up like a hole and bury our dead in like a ceremonial way. But how do elephants do that? They can't dig. Can they? I don't think so. So I'm pretty sure that's not the correct answer. Mm. Long-term memory. There is a saying that says, elephants never forget. But um, I don't think that's correct. Because humans, we also forget sometimes, right? And elephants, how can they have a long-term memory? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think that's the answer either. But I think the answer is option C. I mean, yes, option C. Forming deep family bonds. All animals love their children. Well, most animals love their offspring, like their children. So I think that is the correct answer. So I'm going to say the answer is option C. Let's see if I'm correct. The answer is all of the above. <sighs> My answer was wrong. It's not forming deep family bonds. Well, it is, but it's actually all of the above. Elephants bury their dead they have a long-term memory and they also form deep family bonds. So all of the above. Elephants demonstrate remarkable perception and empathy. or oh, they care for others. Research has shown that elephants mourn the loss of loved ones. Like if we lose a loved one, like, you know, parents or siblings or grandparents or anybody or friends, anybody that we love, we get sad. So even elephants do that and they have been known to dig shallow graves and cover the fallen elephant with foliage, keeping watch over the body for hours or days. So they dig a shallow hole with their trunks and they bury the elephant there, they put the elephant there and cover him with tree trunks and plants and then watch over the body. The old saying, Elephants never forget is more truth than fiction. Hmm. They appear to remember those who they may have encountered only briefly before. In addition to recognizing one another, these long-lived animals are able to recall alternate routes to food and water during dry spells. So, imagine that there is a lake someplace and the elephants go to that lake to drink water. But what if it suddenly it's dry season and then all the water evaporates? Then they can remember different routes that they can use to go to other places, like other lakes, which means they're really smart. And they have deep family bonds also. Wow, elephants are really smart creatures and I didn't know that. They're also really beautiful and you shouldn't kill those animals for their ivory because they're just like us, they're innocent animals and they deserve to live a beautiful life. So you should not buy anything made by animals like ivory, jewelry, things like that. Moving on to the third question. Venom has little effect on this 
thick-skinned, fearless creature that can kill and eat steaks, even the deadly black mamba, and also has a particular... So, the question is, there is an animal that venom has a little effect on. So, if we get bitten by a snake, the venom gets injected into our body. And that means we can even get hospitalized, we can get really sick, or some people might even die if the snake is really deadly. And one of the most deadly snakes is the black mamba. Um, so, these, this fearless creature can kill and eat snakes, even the deadly black mamba. And their venom doesn't have an effect on them. So we have a few options. Option one, I mean option A, server. I'm not sure, not quite sure who that is. Hmm, let, let, I'll see. And then option B, honey badger. Oh, I've seen honey badgers. Honey badgers, they look like a mix between skunks and, I mean, uh, they look like a mix between sloths and bears. They have like curved nails, like sluts, but they also have a lot of shaggy fur and they're big like bears. And then we have option C, a meerkat. Meerkats are little small, really small animals who are really, they stand up tall like this and they're really thin. Um, I'm not really sure that it's the meerkat because it's pretty small and I don't think it can defeat snakes. Next, the last option, option D, bat-eared fox. I think this is the more correct answer because like foxes are big and they're like ferocious. So I'm going to say that the answer is D, bat-eared fox. But it could be honey badger also. I'm still going to stick with option D. Let's see if it's correct. The answer is Honey Badger. So my answer was not correct, but I was almost, almost correct. So the correct answer is Honey Badger. The Honey Badger can kill and eat snakes and they're really thick skin. Their skin is really thick. Our skin isn't thick, but their skin is thick, hairy, they're fearless and ferocious and they have the snake venom has no effect on them. So the honey badger is a ferocious, taking on poisonous scorpions and snakes with easiness, like they, it's so easy for them to take on snakes. Bites from black mambas and cobras have little effect on this thick skin creature. So bites from deadly snakes, which would often mean death for us, means a little prick or a little pain for them. Hmm. Honey badgers have been known to steal cheetah cubs from dens. So these animals are really, really ferocious. And they steal cheetah cubs, the babies of cheetahs, from dens. That's pretty rude. But they steal cheetah cubs from dens and they eat the babies of cheetahs. <sighs> oh, also important thing, bee stings also does not hurt them. Uh, as they extract bee larvae from hives like bears, bee bites also don't hurt them, but it hurts us. <sighs> you know what I'm thinking? So I told you we were going to our grandparents' house, right? But I don't really know anything about it. My mom hasn't told me when we're leaving, what we are going to do, what time we're leaving, what we're going to do. How long will it take for us to get there? Most importantly, what will we wear? I can't wear these, right? So I have a few questions to ask my mother that I've been waiting to ask. So I'm quickly going to go ask those questions and come. It won't take a while. I promise I'll come back and finish my homework. Just you wait, okay?
ask my mother what's happening, what time are we going to our grandparents' house? And guess what she said? It's really easy to guess. It's what she always says. That homework is important and that I have to do my homework first before she says anything to me. Which is really unfair. I'm also going to my grandparents' house with them. I deserve to know. But I have to finish my homework now. And when the homework is, well, not very fun. Actually, I think it's very helpful for us when we study. But I still have to finish these, so let's go fast, fast, fast. Okay, question number four. How heavy is an ostrich egg? Ostriches are really big birds. They can't fly and they live in the desert. So they have really big eggs. Really, really big. Like if you take an ostrich egg and a chicken egg, the ostrich egg is like this much and the chicken egg is like this much. So there's a big comparison between the two. So there is four options. Option A. Four pounds, which is about, I think, about 1.7 kilograms, so like two kilograms. And then we have three pounds, option B, option C, two pounds, and option D, one ounce. One ounce? Ounces are like really, really small measurements. So I definitely don't think it's an ounce because one ounce is like pretty small. So it's not an ounce. Ostrich eggs are really heavy. So I think I'm going to go with my maximum option, which is option A, four pounds, which is about 1.7 kilograms. Let's see if my answer is correct. The answer is three pounds. wasn't correct but it was pretty close the actual answer is option b three pounds i knew i shouldn't have gone extra three pounds is like 1.3 kilograms so it's really heavy explanation my teacher gave me an explanation the ostrich is the champion of all the birds it is the heaviest and tallest living bird and also lays the largest eggs, which can be up to six inches long. Six inches. This is like an inch, right? So it's like, it's pretty tall. It's like, it's like really tall. Not that tall, but pretty tall. And this flightless creature uses its powerful legs to reach speeds of 43 meters per hour. That's, that's pretty fast. Even humans can't run that fast. So it can't fly, it's a bird, but it can't fly, like the penguin. And it is the fastest land runner of any bird. And its eggs, normally chicken eggs weigh like 50 to 70 grams, while ostrich eggs, on the other hand, weigh about 1.3 kilograms, which is, I think, yeah, it's a much bigger difference. So yes, I was close, but next time I'm going to get my answer right for sure. So question number five. How fast can a cheetah run? Oh, I, I remember, I, I know, I know. Oh, I can't remember very well. So I know that the cheetah is the fastest animal and it is like super, super fast. Hmm. Okay, so let's see, we have four options again. Option A, 85 meters per hour. Option, option B, 70 meters per hour. Option C, 50 meters per hour. And option D, 45 meters per hour. First of all, I don't think it's 45 meters per hour because an ostrich can run to 43 meters per hour. And that's not much of a difference, but the cheetah can run super, super fast. So I don't think it's option number D, 45 meters per hour. Also, 
I don't think it's 85 meters per hour because I learned from the past two times not to go too extra. So I don't think it's 85 meters per hour. Hmm. I think it must be 70 meters per hour because 50 meters per hour, I think there are animals who can run faster than that because the rhinoceros is also pretty fast. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to say that it's option number B, 70 meters per hour. And I think that's correct. Let's see. The answer is 70 meters per hour. Man, she's wrong. I mean, wait. My answer is correct. It is 70 meters per hour. I guess I got so used to not having my answer correct that I got it correct. So my answer is correct. It's 70 meters per hour. So let's see the explanation. The cheetah is the fastest land animal on earth, as I said before. Accelerating from 0 to 60 meters per hour in 3 seconds. That is like so fast. Like boom. It's like faster than a car, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Um, using bursts of speed, these swift, agile hunters are able to chase down prey in less than one minute. So that means they're really, 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 really fast. Okay, fun fact. We have a very, very, very fun fact. Fun, fun fact. The word cheetah derives from the Sanskrit word Chitraka means, which means the spotted one. That's a fun fact for you to remember. All right. The last question, question number six. Match the name with the picture. All right. So we have here a picture. You see the picture? You can see the picture. Okay. So we have four options. Option A, Washington Monument. Option B, Moai, option C, Pentagon, and option D, Vesuvio. And I already know what this is. It's Mount Vesuvio. Yay! Because, you know how I noticed? Vesuvio is a mountain. And I remember that it has like a crater in the middle. So it's like gone down in the middle. It's like pretty big. It's like big crater. And I know that Washington Monument is like a stone monument, so it can't be. Moai is an island with stone carvings, but I don't think it's Moai. Pentagon is the Pentagon-shaped building, so it has to be Mount Vesuvio. Let's see if I'm correct. And we're almost done with homework, so let's see if my answer is correct. The answer is a Vesuvio. So my answer was correct. I got two answers correct in a row. That's really, 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 really good. So this is our last question. I'll just give you a short explanation on what Mount Vesuvio is. Mount Vesuvio is a volcano located on the gulfs of Naples in Italy. So it is one of the several volcanoes which form the Campanian Volcanic Arc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD destroyed the Roman cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Aplontis and Stabiae. So Mount Vesuvius is a very dangerous volcano and it can erupt really fast and dangerously and it sends these blasts of hot rocks and it's really dangerous so in the 79 AD a long time ago it destroyed the Roman cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum or Pontus as well as several other settlements. The eruption ejected clouds of storms, ashes and volcanic gases. More than 1000 people died in the eruption but the exact numbers are unknown. The only surviving eyewitness account of the events consists of two letters by Pliny the Younger to historian 
tactics. Vesuvius has erupted many times since, and it is the only volcano on the European mainland to have erupted within the last 100 years. Oh, that's a fun fact too. Today, it is regarded as one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world because of the population of 3 million people living near enough to be affected. And it is considered a danger zone. <laughs> We're done with homework. We did our homework so, so, so fast. Congratulations. And now I can finally go ask my mother about the details about when we're going to our grandparents' house. I'm so excited. I cannot believe it. We hardly ever go there. And now I can go and play because I finished my homework. Until next time. Bye.